I'm standing on the squiggly bridge spanning the River Clyde in the centre of Glasgow to tell you the incredible story of Glasgow's potteries. Did you know that Glasgow was a major producer and exporter of ceramics from the 1750s up until the 1980s? And it all started here in 1748, behind me on the banks of the Clyde with the establishment of Delfield Pottery by James Watt. This marked the start of Glasgow's pottery industry. The Clyde and later the canal and railway networks were fundamental to the rapid growth and expansion of Glasgow's pottery industry, providing vital transport networks for the export trade. And Glasgow Potteries produced pots for a truly global market. The list of export countries is extraordinary, and I'll take a deep breath now. With pottery exported to Canada, America, Cuba, the West Indies, Brazil, Chile, Uruguay, Argentina, Nigeria, Kenya, South Africa, Sri Lanka, India, Myanmar, Malaysia, Brunei, Singapore, Borneo, Indonesia, New Zealand and Australia, and closer to home, France, Denmark, Norway and Ireland. And during the latter part of the 19th century, Glasgow potteries became major rivals to the famous Staffordshire potteries. A hundred kilns marked Glasgow's mighty pottery industry. However, all the pottery buildings and kilns have been wiped from the landscape and the story of Glasgow's pottery is largely forgotten. This film aims to briefly tell the story of four of Glasgow's 15 industrial potteries exporting their ware across the globe and reconnect this pottery story to the people of Glasgow and visitors to the city. Behind me is Sight Hill Bridge, a brand new pedestrian and cycling bridge over what is now one of Glasgow's most important transport arteries, the M8. This new bridge, opening in March 2022, will reconnect communities in North Glasgow to the city, restoring severed pathways and historic rights of way. It also allows us to reconnect the past to the present and better understand Glasgow's pottery industry. The building of the M8 over the Monkland Canal severed Glasgow's historic pottery sites from their all-important canal transport routes. This bridge, reconnecting communities in Glasgow, offers the opportunity to tell the stories of four of Glasgow's largest industrial potteries, which were right on its doorstep. The Caledonian Pottery, Port Dundas Pottery, Bells Pottery and Britannia Pottery. It is difficult to imagine as virtually all traces of Glasgow's pottery industry have been demolished, but occupying both sides of this bridge in the mid-1850s stood over half of Glasgow's 100 pottery kilns. This would have been in an area marked by busy, bustling streets alive with the women, men and children employed in the pottery industry, with carts and trolleys bringing coal and transporting pottery produced to the canal boats for export, and the air would have been filled with thick smoke produced by the burgeoning kilns. This is the site of Port Dundas Pottery, one of Glasgow's largest industrial potteries, built next to what was the junction of the Forth and Clyde Canal and the Monkland Canal. Port Dundas Pottery had 17 kilns and four chimneys, making it one of the largest of Glasgow's potteries. It was established in 1828 and produced stoneware beer bottles, jam jars and whiskey flagons, amongst other products, and initially salt glazed and then later bristol glazed their ware. Port Dundas exported huge amounts of stoneware across the world to countries like Argentina, Cuba, Australia and Norway. It closed in the mid-1920s and was one of the last of Glasgow's pottery buildings still standing. This rare photograph shows the Renton Street frontage of one of the buildings in 1968 before it was demolished. This Bristol glazed flagon was produced here in the late 19th century.
Behind me, right next to the south entrance of the new bridge, stood the mighty Bells or Glasgow Pottery Factory, which held prized position right up against the banks of the Monkwood Canal. It was established by brothers John and Matthew Bell in 1840 and is probably the best known of Glasgow's potteries, exporting thousands of pieces of pottery worldwide. It boasted 18 kilns and employed hundreds of people. The Bell brothers even purpose-built tenements on Kyle Street to house their workers. Bell's research traditional symbols, specific cultural motifs and exotic fruits to entice the buyers for their transfer wear plates. The factory shut its doors in 1912 and the last evidence of this pottery giant was demolished in the 1990s. This transfer wear plate is called Bua and Anas and is decorated with pineapples and culturally desirable jewel colours and was produced here in the 1880s specifically for the Southeast Asian markets. The Britannia pottery was another giant in the history of Glasgow's potteries. It had 13 kilns and was situated next to the St Rollox Basin behind me for easy access to transport. It was specifically built for the export industry by Robert Cochran in 1857, supplying both American and Canadian markets. This image gives you an idea of the size of the kilns and the colossal amount of pottery produced. The pottery initially produced white granite ware which was exceptionally strong and able to withstand travel across the vast American prairies and over the Rocky Mountains. However, it soon had its eye on other markets and like Bell's, specifically targeted the Southeast Asian markets, producing transfer ware and sponge ware for Myanmar, Singapore, Sri Lanka and Indonesia. Britannia pottery closed in 1839 and was subsequently demolished. This sponge ware and painted plate with a star and crescent moon was destined for the Southeast Asian markets. The Caledonian pottery was established here in Garngad Hill, now Royston, on the north banks of the Monkton Canal in 1800. It began producing chinaware, earthenware, creamware and Egyptian blackwares employing skilled workers from Staffordshire. It was based here for 72 years until it moved to a new site in Rutherglen under the ownership of the Mother Murray family. Murray expanded the range of pottery produced by the factory and the pottery employed agents in Scotland, England and Ireland to market its pots. In the late 19th and early 20th century, the output of the pottery was massive with an extensive export industry to America and New Zealand with exports also targeting Brazil, Chile, India and Australia. The Caledonia pottery shut its doors in 1925, the remains of which now lie under the M74. This is an Egyptian blackware sugar bowl produced on this site in the 1850s. The story of Glasgow's pottery industry is extraordinary. The success of export potteries was due to their links through the Clyde canals and railway networks to the shipping areas of the city, such as Port Glasgow and Greenock. The number of countries reached by Glasgow's pottery industry and the intercultural links created as a result span the globe. The building of this new bridge allows us to reconnect to this amazing story of entrepreneurship, craftsmanship and artistry and understand and reimagine Glasgow's mighty pottery industry. <laughs>